Hello and welcome to Ivy Moves. My name is Ivona and today we have a 20 minute yoga form menstruation class for the days when we feel particularly weak, vulnerable and we need a little bit more support. You may need a cushion, bolster, blanket, a pillow from the bed, anything that is soft and is there to hold you. Once you're ready, I'll meet you on the mat. Let's start in a comfortable seated position. It could be with our heels under us or cross-legged, lying on the floor or on the mat is also an option. Anything where we can stay still for a couple minutes to breathe, to meditate, to really connect with our body, with our experience today. Closing the eyes if you're seated, extending the spine towards the sky. If you are laying down, try to tuck the chin towards the chest. Let's start taking a couple deep breaths, feeling the belly, the lungs with oxygen. And exhale loud through the mouth. Ah. Placing the palms of your hands onto your womb on top of where there may be discomfort today. And let's keep breathing very deep, expanding the belly, the chest. And with every exhale, ah, we surrender a little bit more. We allow for the heat to decentralize, to spread through our body, to distribute itself. Every inhale is a fresh energy coming into our body. And every exhale is <sighs> breathing out the tension the pain, the discomfort. And let's really put our attention into our core, to this vessel of life, our uterus. And even though right now we experience all this discomfort, maybe find a way to connect with it in a peaceful, in a grateful manner that our bodies are fertile, that our bodies are a representation of Mother Nature in human form. And whatever you may decide to do with this female body, with its fertility, let's not forget that it is really the most pure representation of nature, of the cycles that we see in seasons, in the cycles of the moon circling around the earth. So is it the female cycle, honoring it, One last deep breath, keeping the eyes closed. Breathe it out loud. <sighs> Let's remain with the eyes closed. And we're going to do a breathing technique for calming down the body and the nervous system, which may be agitated today. It's called the Brahmari breathing technique. We're going to do three rounds of it. It's also called the Humming Bee technique. You're going to take a deep breath in. You're going to put your pointing fingers in your ears, closing your ears, and you're going to exhale with the sound of the bee, which sounds like mm. The reason we're doing that is because we create this vibration in the body, this mm, which is also part of the mantra um, which has been scientifically proven to recreate the same frequencies in our bodies when we sing it. The same frequencies that are found in outer space. So 
So by creating these sounds in our body, we are really getting back in tune with the source, with the universal energy that we all are. So as I said, we're going to do three rounds. You can take your time as much as you want. I'll do them with you. Breathe in, fill your lungs to the capacity, closing your ears and exhaling. And you can pause the video and do this many times as you need. And I hope you are in a safe space where you can go as loud as you need because it really feels great. Okay, when you're ready, wherever you're sitting or lying down, closing the ears, taking deep breath in and exhaling. Whenever you're ready, coming back to this point with the video, we're going to start with the physical part of the practice. We're going to start in child's pose on the back of our mat, touching the toes together, opening the knees as wide as you need to give space to your chest to fall. Option here as well to place the pillow or cushion under your body to support you. If this is what you need today, you can turn the face to one way or the other. And really trying to push the hips close to the heels. What we're going to do in this practice is release tension around the hip area. We're going to do that with very gentle hip openers, twists, and a couple of abdominal stretches to release any tension from all angles in the area. Then here, allowing yourself to sink into the, into the mat, into the cushion. Change sides. If you had your face facing one side, make sure to turn the other cheek. Just for good measure, if not for anything else. And it's really important to start normalizing that yes, having a period, and I don't mean just bleeding, is a whole other experience than the male hormone cycle. We really go through phases. We really get hormonal. Of course we are. Our body is trying to reproduce. Our body is preparing to create life. That's a lot of work. It's inevitable, it affects us. Okay, we're gonna get out of the child's pose, putting the pillow on the side. And we're going to go into twisted child's pose. The hips stay close to the heels, snuggling the left arm under the chest and across, and using the right. and using the right arm to twist us a little bit deeper. Maybe it's somewhere above our head. Maybe even comes up and behind us, finds the left thigh, twist a little bit more. So if you need to lower down the pace of whatever you're doing, whether it's physical, professional, during certain days of your period, slow down. Your body will thank you in the long term. Okay, let's change the twist. Snuggle the right arm underneath you, the left knee, be somewhere above your head, or even comes to the lower back, finds the right time. And we're twisting. And 
one of the big challenges I am personally facing is talking to men about the period, normalizing it and telling them that, hey, I can't have the same energy levels as you every day of the month because I am different and this is not only normal, but it's healthy for me to respect my boundaries. Letting go of the twist, coming back to center. And let's walk onto our bellies, lifting the right knee on the height of our hip. If we have a little bit more energy, maybe we can take advantage here to stretch the abdominals, the front side of the body. Maybe we even lift up to go all the way here as a stretch. If we can't be bothered, we can lay onto the pillow and just use gravity to pull our hip joint towards the ground to open it to stimulate circulation there to nourish that part of our body here we can also twist if the right leg is up the same right arm snuggles and twists to the left. Again, we can use our pillow, lying down. Using the weight of our body against the floor to do the job. We really don't need to pretend that we have more energy than we actually are, have today. And of course, you are capable and strong and skillful, and we can do all these amazing things. But maybe a couple of days we, we don't want to. It's not like that we can't, but we're going to respect. Just like in winter, we don't stay up late. This is our inner winter. Okay. Coming back to center of the body. I'm going to change sides, right leg comes behind us, the left knee comes on the height of the hip. And again, if you want, we can stretch the front body. Now we can lay on the pillow. So just as in the winter period, we do stay more inside. We do dress more for the cold weather. Let's respect that we have our winter days in our hormone cycle, our new moons and activity slows down for, for us to flourish again back in spring, just like nature. Let's twist left arm, twist towards the right. We can put pillow again. The right hand goes wherever is most comfortable. Here we're also opening the shoulder blades, stimulating some blood circulation there, as we may get some stiffness. If we had the privilege to take a day off, to spend it in bed, just like we should. Because if you're here, you're probably feeling a little bit down if you're not in any other heat video of vinyasa you probably need this therapeutic 20 minutes a couple last breaths here and coming back to center let's take the legs behind us and let's take one casual back bend. It doesn't have to be anything too aesthetic or aligned as long as our lower back doesn't hurt. We can shimmy from left to right. We can maybe shift onto the left side and we'll stretch this left side of the body heavy on the shoulder. Maybe this is one of the few times I'll tell you shoulder close to you, it's fine. Changing sides, just really stretching all that has been cramping and tensing around our abdominal area. Breathing deep. 
I think it's so magical when you start discovering the magic of the cycle. Okay, let's come to the tabletop. Let's do a couple cat cows again to stretch the front side of the body. We're not going to stay here for too long. Mm. Really focus on putting the attention in the pelvic floor movement more than the shoulder grip today. It's what we're here for. Okay, we're going to go into pigeon with the right leg in front of us. Take it as deep or as shallow as you need today. Don't be shy to use a blanket, a block, whatever it is that may elevate a little bit of the tension. We are not here to impress anybody, to prove anything. Grab that pillow and enjoy some moments in pigeon. I know it's a little bit counterintuitive to start stretching this area feels so sore. But just imagine the tension this our body goes through right now. And when we breathe, when we send it some fresh oxygen, we literally breathe life, prana. As we say in yoga, prana is the life force. And we consume it through food, of course, but also through air. That's why we insist so much on breathing. Now, you can stay in your pigeon or we can twist if the right leg is ahead in front of you. The left arm crosses the body and we lie down, pillow form. And the stretch gets more intense for sure. Breathing deep. It's annoying how much in yoga we insist on the breath, but it is really what makes the difference. So what separates life from that matter. Okay, let's get out. And let's change sides. You can just sit on one side, up, swing the other leg in front of us. Get yourself comfy. Maybe put the pillow in front of you. And let's surrender onto that side. It's absolutely normal that left and right feel different, faster or easier. And especially in a day like our bleeding time, bleeding season. When we're especially sensitive, especially vulnerable, it's normal that our senses are heightened, that we need a little bit more support. So don't be shy to take any extra prop under your hip, under your thigh. Okay, let's take a twist and move the pillow if you need. Have that right arm underneath. And wow, it immediately intensifies the stretch. I'm getting a lot of fresh blood, fresh oxygen into these areas. I really hope it makes a difference for you. It certainly does for me right now. Try to breathe as deep as maybe your belly and your chest start touching new parts of your leg. That's when they need them, when you employ them. That much awareness into the breath. Okay, let's get out of the twist. Let's get out of the pigeon, sitting onto your left hip and coming into butterfly. Take it, take the butterfly as wide or as narrow as you need it to. I'm gonna grab myself a pillow. 
and maybe a block and we surrender really trying to open that hip area maybe even on the pillow gets onto the knees that's actually a great idea i'm gonna push it and then the pillow helps the knees fall to the sides opening up more space getting ready to go to the darkest days of our cycle getting ready for spring this makes me smile talking about that makes me smile I had so many days in which I'm like, but I could train so hard last week. Why I can't train this hard now? It's like, <laughs> because that's not how your body works today. That's not how your body works at all. It's cyclical. Getting out of butterfly, getting out of the pillow of your legs, and let's do it. One well, last seated stretch before we get on our back. Putting, opening the legs on 60-70%, really don't need to impress anybody. The pillow, the block, or even just, oh, that's too far for me to do. And let's just lie onto our left leg or the right, whichever you've chosen. We're going to the other side anyway. Opening the side body as well here, bonus here on the around the mid low back. I'm sure there's some relief as well for everybody there. Let's change sides. I'm getting my pillow, my block. I'm on the right leg now. Maybe you change them and lying onto the right side, extending the left arm a little bit far so we can really stretch that left side body for some reason the left is a little bit tighter for me today I wonder why usually the right side is my dominant it's probably where I exert more force but that's what happens today just observing no judging One last breath on this side, inflate the left ribs. Mm. Perfect, heading up and putting all our props on the side. Actually, we may need the block in the end. Switching sides, taking the legs together. And we're gonna just have a gentle bridge, not wheel, bridge here. We can use our block under the sacrum to lift the hips and start opening that area. I know it's counterintuitive when we want to curl <laughs> into a fetus position, but it really starts loosening up all the tension that we have here today. So if you don't have a block, you can use your hands just like that for the elevation and hold yourself. You don't have to be active here. All we want is to open up this area and do whatever you want with the arms and the legs. Put them in a way that they are comfortable for you today. Hmm. Especially after all the time on the belly and the pigeon. This feels really nice for me. It really makes a difference right now. Maybe spend a little bit more time here if you'd like. Pause the video, come back to this pose and I would invite you to take the final resting position. Shavasana could be classical Shavasana, could be with the legs into butterfly to keep opening that area, maybe placing the palms 
on top of our womb and let's start noticing if you feel any different now in what way if the heat changed or transformed and in what way you can stay here for as long as you want thank you for trusting me with your practice today and I hope you have the privilege to take it easy in your days with inner winter I'll see you soon again.